welcome back. It's good to have you here again for another session. We're going to be continuing our series called Be, Be Kind, Be Generous, Be Courageous, and Be Together. We're going to be continuing that today. Um, just so that you can go ahead and be turning the scripture, we'll be coming out of Matthew chapter 25 today. So it's before we begin and dive into it, let's go ahead and begin with a word of prayer. Father, we just want to say we thank you and we love you for the great God that you are. You're the mighty God that sits on this throne. And still, sitting on your throne, you care for us personally and deeply. And Father, we're just so grateful and thankful for who you are. And we're just thankful for your son that died on the cross. Father, I pray that you be with us as we go through our next characteristics in this series. And I just pray that you open our hearts and open, your, open our minds to what you have to say. We love you and we thank you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> well, as we begin today, I want to make one thing very clear. This writer of scriptures, the writers of scripture were not scared to use the word do. They were not scared to use the word do at all. Paul in Philippians 4 says this, finally brethren, whatever things are true, noble, just, pure, whatever things are lovely, things of good rapport, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And here's the promise. And the God of peace will be with you. James, the half-brother of Jesus, says this. But be doers of the word and not hearers only. Deceive in yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, He's like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was, a sinner. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, the gospel, and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. And here's the promise. This one will be blessed in what he does. Even Jesus himself was not afraid of using the word do. At the end of the Sermon of the Mount, in Matthew 7, Jesus concludes the Sermon of the Mount by saying this, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the flood came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended, the floods came, the winds blew and beat on that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Let me be clear right now. Because we have accepted Christ as our Lord and Savior, because we are believers, followers of Christ, we are to do the things he has told us to do. We do these things because we're saved, because we're grateful for his sacrifice on the cross. We do, not to earn mercy and grace, but because we already have received mercy and grace. And last week, I began this series with the first thing we are supposed to do, and that's be kind. That's the first of the four characteristics. Be kind. Be kind even when others are not. Be kind even when you don't want to be. And be kind even when it costs you something. And why should we be kind to others? Be kind because of the kindness Christ has already shown you. This week, the characteristic we're going to talk about is be generous. And when I say generous, what is the first thing that comes to mind for most people? Yep, money. But that's only one of four things I'm going to talk about today. The word generous means showing a readiness or willingness to give more of something than is necessary and expected. Generosity is the quality or act of being kind and generous. See, our first characteristic kindness goes along with being generous. And I believe there are four areas in our lives where we should be generous. And I believe these four areas cover everything. Be generous with our time, be generous with our money, with our energy, and be generous with our words. And being generous in all four of these areas begins with our hearts and minds. If we have not accepted the generous offer of mercy and grace that was completed on the cross by Christ himself, how will we ever be able to extend generosity to the world around us? 
Something I see a problem with within many believers, including myself at times, is this. If we don't allow the generous offer of mercy and grace to penetrate not just our hearts, but our minds also, the way we view people, the way we view the world, the thoughts we have in our minds will come out in our actions in ways they shouldn't or in ways that we'll be ashamed of. And even if we do something good, our intentions behind the doing are often selfish and e evil. Paul addresses this very thing in Romans 12 when he says, And do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed. How are you transformed? By the renewing of your mind. Why? That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That way the whole world can see his glory and his greatness. So let's look at our text today out of Matthew 25. I'm going to be reading verses 31 through 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on, on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goat. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for, me, for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, you took me in. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. The righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or, <coughs> excuse me, or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Surely I say to you, Inasmuch as you did it to the one, to one of the least of these, my brethren, you did to me. Then he will say to those on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger and you did not take me in. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick and in prison and you did not visit me. They will also answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he will answer them saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it for one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these, this is the scary part, and these will go away into everlasting punishment. But the righteous, here's the great promise, but the righteous into eternal life. Yes, yes, I know. This passage is about the final judgment of Christ. The judgment of Christ on those alive at the end of the seven-year tribulation period. At his return before the thousand-year reign of Christ on this earth. The millennial period. The millennial period of Revelation 20. The sheep represent the unbelievers and the goat... I mean, I'm sorry. The sheep represent the believers and the goat represent the unbelievers. And here in these verses, we see the, the heart of a kind and generous person. We just, listen to this. We see the sheep actually did something because of their faith in Christ. These believers Jesus refers to here, I can guarantee you, in order to feed the hungry, to give drink to the thirsty, to take in a stranger, or give clothes to those that don't have any, to go to the sick, or those in the hospital, or share the gospel with those that were enslaved to sin, they had to have a generous heart when it came to their time, their money, and their energy. And by the way, in those times when they were being generous, don't you think the words they said, they were not judgmental, but were kind words to help build and encourage these people, even sharing the gospel. So let's stop and let's take a look at these four areas of generosity, beginning, be generous with your time. See, being generous is going to require something of you. I know everyone's time is precious but, precious, but there may be something you don't have time for because you are being generous to someone else that needs it. You may have to take an extra 15 minutes to drop off a meal to a needy family. Or maybe you lose a whole afternoon because you're helping at a local food pantry. I want to be clear about something. 
when you surrendered your life to Christ, your life is no longer your own. Your life belongs to Christ, and that includes your time. God, listen to this, God has the right to interrupt your schedule at any time he wants to achieve his purposes at any time he feels necessary because it's his life. And when he does that to me, I count it all joy. Why? Because I'm able to serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Maybe you'll lose a little time out of your day being generous, but look what heaven will gain. Another soul for all of eternity. I believe a little time out of my day is worth all of eternity, don't you? Be generous with your time for his purposes. And then let's talk about the second characteristic. Oh, this is the one everybody, they cringe on. Be generous with your money. God, you can ask me to do anything, but when serving you begins to affect my pocketbook or my wallet, hold up. We need to talk about this a minute. I have things I want to buy and things I want to do. I can give this much money to the church, but all this extra stuff, it's just too much. Is that not the attitude of so many Christians today? I'll give them a few extra dollars out of my pocket that I don't need. But going out and paying to fix their car so they can go to work? God just goes too far when he asks me to do that. The argument I always hear about money is this. We have helped them so many times. They make bad decisions. They don't know how to manage their money. I'm not going to keep helping financially when they do this. And can I tell you something? I agree with you. You don't need to keep doing that when they are not being responsible. But, let me, let me say this. We can't keep bailing people out when they never learned how to manage money in the first place. So what do we do? We don't spend our money, but we generous, generously invest our time in teaching them of how to manage their money. You see, there's always something we can do to be generous. I want to say the same thing about being generous with your money as I did about being generous with your time. Your money is not yours. It belongs to him. He blessed you with a job or parents that have a job. As in the words of James, every good gift is from above, including the money you have. God has the right to reach into your pocketbook or into your wallet and use the resources he has given you to accomplish his purposes. Be generous with, you, with your money for his purposes. And then we see the third characteristic. Be generous with your energy. I know we all get tired. At the end of a tough school day or at the end of a horrible work day, what do you want to do? You just want to go home, rest, get something to eat, enjoy a little downtime, a little time of peace and quiet. Amen, I'm with you on that. Now let me tell you a little secret. If God asks you to go be generous in some, to someone in some way, even when you are tired and worn out, rest assured that he will give you the strength to do it. God does not call those that are already equipped to do something. God equips us with what we need when he calls us, and that includes strength and energy even when we feel tired and worn out. Paul says in Philippians 4, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He also says in Ephesians 6, be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might, not in your own strength, but his when the call of God seems too much for you to do in your own strength, lean on him. He has an endless supply of power and might in which he will strengthen you with. Use the energy and strength he provides to accomplish his task. You can rest in all of eternity in his presence. Be generous with your energy for his purposes. And then the fourth and final characteristic, be generous. Oh, this one hurts a lot of people. Be generous with your words. Hulk Nelson had a song out a few years ago called Words. This is how part of it went. They've made me feel like a prisoner. They've made me feel set free. They've made me feel like a criminal. Made me feel like a king. They've lifted my heart to places I've never been. 
and they dragged me down back to where I began. Words can build you up. Words can break you down. They can start a fire in your heart, or they can put it out. The words we speak to each other can do so many different things. And sometimes, all a person needs is a kind and gentle word, even when it's someone that has never been that kind to you in the first place. We have the words of life. We have the words of life to speak to a lost and dying world and to each other within the body of Christ. We must build up the body for the purpose of sharing His word of life to those around us in the world. Listen to the chorus of this song. It's called Words by Hawk Nelson. Listen to this chorus. I love this. This is a great prayer even. Let my words be life. Let my words be truth. I don't want to say a word unless it points the world back to you. Amen to that. Be generous with your words for his purposes. Again, I want to be clear about this as I begin to close up. We are kind and generous, not to earn mercy and grace, but because we have received mercy and grace from a kind and generous God. Is being kind and generous going to require something of you? Well, yes, it is. It will require your time. It will require your money. It will require your energy. And in doing so, you will actually have to speak to people you normally don't speak to. They probably won't look like you. They won't act like you. They probably won't like the same things you like, but the words you have to speak to them are a matter of eternal life or death. So be generous with your time. Be generous with your money, your energy. Be generous with your words. To be honest, it's not your time. It's not your money, your energy, or your words in the first place. It all belongs to God. And He has been kind and generous with you, so be kind and generous with others. As I close, I want to read a passage out of 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 7-11 through 11, to you about serving. But the end of all things is at hand. Therefore, be serious and watchful in your prayers. And above all things, have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sin. Be hospitable. In other words, be kind to one another without grumbling. As each one of you have received a gift, minister it to one another. As good stewards, good stewards of what? Your time, your money, your energy. Be good steward, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, oh, there's our words. If anyone speaks, our, speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, if you minister, that's going to require time, money, and energy. If anyone ministers, let him do, do it as with the ability which God supplies that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Be generous with what God has given you. Be generous with your time, your money, your energy, and your words. Be generous because God has been generous with you. Father, we love you. We thank you. And I just pray that your words tonight have touched somebody's heart. And I know as I go through this lesson myself and I prepare, I see places in my own life that I need to fix and I need to work on and I need your help and your strength. And Father, I just pray that you come to us tonight and you just help us where we fall short. We love you and we thank you. In your son's precious and holy name we pray. Amen. I want to say thank you for joining me again this week. We'll be back next Wednesday. And next Wednesday we'll be talking about Be Courageous. Have a great week. God bless.